All right, welcome everybody to Bears Nation Podcast Fantasy Football Edition. I'm your host, Kevin Lapka, alongside two-time winner of my league and very good friend of mine, Mark Minogue. He called the Cooper Cup breakout this past season. He called everyone's bluff on Joe Mixon, and he is a perennial championship contender, whether they like to admit it or not. And he will be in the Bears Nation Podcast Fantasy League that we're doing with the various this year. And today we are revealing our five biggest sleepers for the 2022 fantasy season that you absolutely need to draft mark you're giving me important information for our league this year so you got to be careful but i'm excited man five biggest sleepers it's going to be a, an a important fantasy season upcoming yeah we got to hide this one from the rest of the league absolutely i mean they're going to be clicking on it because they want to know who are these five players that are going to break out that no one's really talking about to be you know in the top 10 of their position group and we're going to focus today on wide receivers and we're going to start with my first guy this is a bears podcast but outside of us being bears fans our number one guy for me at least is darnell mooney now listen the thing about darnell mooney is he had 1055 yards last year as a wide receiver too but that ranked 17th in the league last year in receiving yards. But he wasn't treated as a wide receiver, too, by Justin Fields. He was the number one. Because Justin Fields wasn't getting full-time reps with other players early in training camp because Andy Dalton was on the roster, he has very good rapport with Fields, Mooney, that is, because they were able to connect early on, and they grew a great relationship that you saw come to fruition throughout the year. I mean, he was targeting him more than he was targeting any other receiver on the field when it came to the Bears. And he had 140 targets last year. That's more than DK Metcalf, Debo Samuel, and even Jamar Chase. His target share is super high. And you look at the Bears roster, what everyone says about their offensive personnel is that it's terrible and there's no depth. And you look down and we think there's players that can compete like Byron Pringle, Equinemius St. Brown, rookie Valus Jones Jr. But nonetheless, Darnell Mooney is going to be far and away the number one guy with targets. And his connection with Justin Fields is really strong. In my opinion, Mark, Darnell Mooney is a league winner because people are still going to sleep on him. He's a third year player. He showed some things, but people don't know if he can be a true fantasy stud because he only had four touchdowns last year but if he gets in that eight touchdown range and around 1100 receiving yards those those are top 10 receiving numbers especially if you're in a ppr league when he's getting all the receptions on the bears offense to me mark darna mooney is the number one sleeper and you have to draft him if you're league. he's an absolute league winner i wouldn't say he's like what cooper cup was last year but to me he's a total league winner do you agree don't 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 say cooper cup's name here but yeah no, no i totally agree You've seen, you saw him go up against, you know, some of the best corners and he, you know, he's got that route running. He's that, he can be that guy. So we just got to see him, you know, take that next step with Justin Fields. I, I totally agree. And the thing is, we talk about league winners, right? You talk about guys that can break out like any week, right? You need an important win. You need a guy who's going to put up 25 points. Like there's guys who can give you, you know, a high floor and you know, like, Maybe Michael Thomas this year, right? He's back with Jameis Winston. He can give you a high floor. And there's some people who think he's a sleeper, but you know, he's going to get receptions. Darno Mooney is a guy who like at any moment can break you that 80 yard touchdown because he has the route running savvy. He has the speed and he has the connection. He has a deep ball thrower who Justin Fields was the number one quarterback in the NFL last year in average depth of target. He was throwing the ball further than any, he was targeting receivers further than any quarterback in the NFL. He wants to air it out. He wants the bigger play. And those plays are going to Darnell Mooney. So if you need a big week, you got, you know, not every week are your guys going to score 20 plus points. You need a guy to pick it up and score maybe even 30. I think Darnell Mooney's going to have a few of those this week. But let's go to you, Mark. Your number one sleeper for the 2022 season from the wide receiver position. Who do you got for us? Give me, uh, give me Gabriel Davis. Okay. Got, uh, you know, I think he's going to be the clear number two to Stephon Diggs this year. Playing for one of the highest scoring offenses in the league, helmed by Josh Allen. Probably going to be a top, top two quarterback this year. Uh, and someone's got to catch all those touchdowns. Correct. Aside from Stephon Diggs, I think, you know, he had those crazy games towards the end of last year in the playoffs. Where he, you know, I think against the Chiefs, he had four touchdowns. And yeah. Close to 200 yards. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of that breakout potentially was shown last year in the playoffs. And Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley are both gone. And, you know, those guys weren't consistently taking large chunks out of, you know, that offense. Not a lot of you know, not a ton of targets, but, you know, they occasionally would, you know, go off for 15, 20 fantasy points last season. So yeah. with those guys gone, I think Gabriel Davis is going to be a guy to target this year for sure. It's kind of funny because I feel like this is a player that sort of 
it hasn't really burst on the scene until that playoff game. So a lot of people don't really know, like, even how old he is. Like, this is a third-year player who just maybe hasn't hit his stride in the NFL yet. But you're right. When you talk about this could be the number one quarterback in fantasy this year, and many people do believe that Josh Allen will be, who's going to catch all those passes? Who's going to catch all those touchdowns? Do you think what we saw in the playoff game against the Chiefs last year is a major glimpse of what we'll see from Gabriel Davis this year? Because there's a lot of people who are taking that one game against the Chiefs into consideration when they're drafting Gabriel Davis this year, they're thinking that one game could tell what he's going to be this year. Do you think that's the case for sure? No, I mean, that's a little bit of, you know, well, he's not going to catch four touchdowns in the game, but he's not going to catch four touchdowns right. in the game, but no, I think, you know, that, that game grew the relationship with Josh Allen a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit more trust and, you know, teams are probably going to start locking in on Stefan Diggs. So Josh Allen will have that, you know, extra guy to go to when he needs it i think yeah. yeah i think gabriel davis is a steal this year major steal and I, I think there's some people who will reach for him but there's still a lot of people who don't know about him and know about what he's going to be but that's why we're here telling you so that's mark's number one sleeper for this year we're going to go to my number two sleeper from the wide receiver position that would be new york giants second year player Kadarius tony and this one's a weird one for a lot of people because Kadarius Tony kind of burst on the scene last year where he had like an 180 yard receiving game. And everyone's like, what the heck, Kadarius Tony? Like, what? who is this? What is he doing? We know he's a first round draft pick, but he wasn't doing anything until that one game. And then he had an ankle injury. And then after that, Daniel Jones went down and Mike Glennon was getting snaps for the Giants. And there was a lot of instability there at the quarterback position for the Giants. And that's what caused Kadarius Tony to kind of fall off in the end of last year and ended up being a cut for a lot of people. A lot of people who had Kadarius Tony, including myself on the roster they i cut him at the end of the year and look i don't i'm not gonna come out here and say i trust daniel jones and that's the reason i believe Kadarius tony's gonna be a good receiver because in a lot of the reasonings that we have for these wide receivers it's because well they have a quarterback who's gonna throw the ball around he's gonna accurately throw the ball around he's gonna give him an opportunity to make plays i do think he's going to be better than what he has been in the past because they have the new offensive system with Brian Dabble coming from Buffalo. And you saw Brian Dabble was able to do with Buffalo and Josh Allen. Imagine what he can do just with Daniel Jones to make him just good enough to make Kadarius Tony a legitimate fantasy sleeper. And there's a lot of people who think Kenny Galladay is a fantasy sleeper. I don't know if he is that guy. And you look in the, you look at the way Kadarius Tony runs routes. He's a really good route runner, but also what he can do after the catch. Like Kenny Galladay is a great red zone threat. He's a guy who's going to catch the ball uh, he, he, in traffic, but Kadarius Tony can do a lot of different things. They ran the ball with him three times last year. He's going to catch screens. He's going to have the opportunity to do a lot of things that, you know, Darnell Mooney does and get open in a lot of ways. So I think Tony emerges as the number one. And in games where Tony saw nine or more targets, he was averaging 83.8 yards per game, which is on pace for 1,000. 424 yards and that's an average of 16.82 fantasy points per game so i think you have to kind of before you just look at because what a lot of people do mark like the casuals of fantasy football which there are many i mean people are going to watch this video because not everyone does the research and you'll look at Kadir's tony's numbers last year and you'll say well why are they so low but you have to look deeper into the quarterback play his injuries and all the factors that made him a guy that was cut later in the year, but he has the potential to absolutely break out in a new offensive system with better quarterback play. ESPN has the, has him as the average 47.5 wide receiver. He is such, his ADP is 117 right now. He is such a late pick with insane value. Like this is a guy who's going to be a flex for most rosters, if not a bench player, depending on the size of your league. If you are in an eight team league, this might be a bench player for you. And this is a very, 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 Boom pick if, if he's a bench player. Do you agree with Kadarius Tony or are you more I on like, the Kenny like Galladay side? Pick a lock. No, I'm with you on uh, Kenny Galladay. I think his best days are behind him for sure. But, you know, Kadarius Tony's physical player, kind of a freak athlete, and I think we see him take that next step this year. So yeah. I, agree. I agree with that. Absolutely. Pick. All right, so I got Darnell Mooney, Kadarius Tony in my top two. You have Gabriel Davis as your number one, but who's your number two? So I'm a number two. I'm going to go with Juju here. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised people are low on him. He's going about like 80, uh, 84 ADP, which is pretty low. Yeah. And I'm thinking he's got a, 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 a pretty, you know, easy road to wide receiver one on the Chiefs if he wants it. You know, he's on a prove it deal with the Chiefs right now. He's signed for one year. 
Uh, and I think, you know, he's had, he's had those seasons before he had, you know, I think last season was a little bit lower than people were expecting. He was injured. Yeah. Injured. And, you know, Ben Roethlisberger is getting old, but now you're playing with the best quarterback or top, top two, top three quarterback in the league, a guy that can make any throw and you're Juju, you know, you're, you're in that like short to middle range, uh, area. I think he can return to, you know, his his sophomore year form possibly this year with Mahomes and with with the price, you know, around 84th ADP, I think that's totally worth I think it's totally worth a, a shot there. That's another probably flex area, um, you know, for a guy like Juju Smith Schuster, unless you're loading up on running backs and he's a wide receiver too. But the thing that I kind of take notice of was they were comfortable, you know, giving away Tyreek Hill to the Miami Dolphins. And I think there was a lot of people who speculated Juju Smith Schuster would be a Kansas City Chief before free agency even started. Do you think there was anything going on in the Chiefs' mind saying we're okay? giving away Tyreek Hill? Like, obviously, you're never okay giving away a player the caliber of Tyreek Hill, but you're more comfortable doing that because you know you're going to have a guy like Juju Smith-Schuster coming in. Does that mean anything to you that they may have confidence in him, that he was on the radar for a while and maybe a guy that Patrick Holmes pointed out before free agency? Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think I didn't think about that. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, if I'm the Chiefs, I don't let Tyreek Hill go. I think him and Mahomes yeah. are too perfect, too perfect of a duo there because Tyreek Hill is able to, you know, or, or Mahomes was able to extend plays and Tyreek was able to get open. And that's when you saw that magic happen. But, you know, Juju's a smart player. I think, you know, he's going to find those pockets. He's going to get open. He's going to be able to extend plays. And I think Patrick Mahomes might start looking for him consistently. I mean, I think you're right because a lot of the problems with Juju smith Juicer the past few years, like when you would watch the Steelers games, you know, because they, they're on prime time a lot, was he wasn't getting open. Like I didn't see a lot of separation out of him. He's now in a system where he doesn't have to do that anymore. Like it, he's going to be in a scheme that's going to, you know, get him to open space. Like mm -hmm. just they're going to scheme him open. Like he doesn't have to do as much on his own. So I I like that Juju smith uh, pick. I mean, I think the touchdowns need to be increased. He hasn't had over 10 touchdowns in his career. And if he wants to be a legitimate, like a top 10 fantasy receiver, he's going to need to get 10 plus touchdowns or, you know, consistently be in that eight to nine range. He had seven the year that he was a pro bowler when he had 1400 yards. Um, So the touchdown rates are going to be important for him as far as his, you know, major fantasy value, but he's going to be the number one wide receiver on what many people believe is still the number one offense in the NFL because of one man, I guess, two men, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. So that is a name that I think people know, right? People know, but they the, 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 the jury's out on, on whether um, <clears throat> he can really be, you know, that number one guy. So that's your number two. Let's go to my number three. We're going to go to a division flow. A lot of people watching this. This is a Bears channel. I hate to say it, but Amon Ross St. Brown of the Detroit Lions, I think, is a major sleeper. And there's a lot of people who are concerned about the wide receiver room that they have constructed in Detroit with Jameson Williams being a first round draft pick for them. And then DJ Shark coming over in free agency. But to me, Amon Ra is still the number one. He had 119 targets as a rookie. And in his final six games of 2021, he averaged 25.2 points per game. 25.2 the man was popping off i don't know mark if you had him in our league i know someone in our league had him was it you yeah, i picked him up yeah there you go if you want to know why this man has credibility that's why because he was an absolute league winner for mark although mark didn't win league he got to the championship when i'm in ross st brown was a major reason why um and, and the, the thing that i think about when i see why I think he's gonna be the number one is I think he has a really good connection with Jared Goff. And we sit here and we, we, you know, we like to say our things about Jared Goff on this podcast, specifically my other co-host, Jake Hassan. But nonetheless, like in his recent years, he's been proven to still be able to put up, you know, good numbers for his receivers. Like I just read you the numbers about Amara St. Brown. And if you go back to his time in LA, although that's the Sean McVay system, I mean, he was feeding, you know, Robert Woods and Cooper Cup all the time. And they were having no issues over there. You know, things were great. Um, so I think Amara St. Brown is just, he is a major sleeper for me. And all these people are saying, you know, draft DJ Shark, Jeff Jameson Williams. I think Amon Ra is the number one. And it's, you know, it's also important to note that, you know, he, those last five games of the season where he was averaging all those points, those games were without TJ Hawkinson and four of them without DeAndre Swift. But I think that's like, that's not a, you know, there's people who are using that against him. Like, oh, he only did that because those guys weren't there. It, those things aren't really true. There's no correlation to those things. If anything, it's a good thing because it allowed the Lions to discover him with those guys out. And now they know that he's going to be a big time player for them. I think he's a major sleeper. Mark, you saw last year he was on your team. Do you agree that he's going to come into 2022 with a lot of steam? This is this is my least favorite pick of yours so far. Ooh, why? To be honest. 
Uh, I think, you know, he did go crazy last year. And so I think people are going to overvalue him in drafts this year. And for the other reasons you said, you know, they, the wide receiver room got a little more crowded. He was their only to go to, he was their only go-to guy for that stretch of time. And he did, he did go crazy. I buy the, I do buy the Jared Goff connection, but I think people are going to overvalue him in drafts this year. I, I you see, I think there's, there's two ways of looking at it. It's a two sided coin. It's either people are going to overvalue him or undervalue him. Like there's nothing in the middle because people are either going to overvalue him because of those numbers that I stated and, you know, recency bias, I guess you could say those last six games and then people are going to undervalue him because they're either, they're worried about that room. So maybe if you can, you know, play it right and draft him in a decent range where you're not overvaluing or you're not undervaluing. I think he could still be a sleeper because I do think he still has the potential to be a boom player. Like, I don't think you're doubting the fact mm-hmm. that he could be a boom player. You're just a no, little I bit totally, worried I totally that, agree with you that he's going to be a great player this year. Just, I think he might go too early in a couple of drafts. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think there will be people um, who do that. So you got to just make sure you get them at the right spot. But, you know, you guys watching this, we, we know you guys are, are smart fantasy football drafters. And, you know, we know you're going to make the right pick. But let's go to your number three, Mark. Um, he is a major division foe. But nonetheless, we got to be objective here. This is fantasy football. You who do you got for number three? Like Can't be like Kevin and not draft anybody from the NFC North. I never do it. He never does. But I got – give me Alan Lazard at number three. Uh, you know, obviously, Devontae Adams is gone. Uh, uh, and also, Marquez uh, Valdez Scant- Scantling is gone too, correct? He is on the Chiefs. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, who's Rodgers going to throw to? <laughs> he's the number one. I, he's, he's the number one. He's got, you know, he's got a rapport. They do have Christian Watson, uh, what, a second rounder. But yeah, he's, 34th you know, overall. Yeah, what, 34th? Yeah, I mean, he's the only guy that has significant experience with Rodgers. Rodgers is, you know, hate to say it, but he's going to be a great quarterback again. Um, and, you know, Alan Lazard is going to be wide receiver one. He's 6'5". He's a massive, massive human being. End zone target, you know. I think for how late he's going, too. I think like 130 ADP. That's a major steal in my eyes. I mean, that's got to be the latest ADP for a, you know, what is to consider to be a wide receiver one, right? Like it has to be. I mean, I guess no one else thinks he's going to be that guy. I don't know. He's not that guy. People don't think he's that. You think he's that guy. And I think, I think, you mentioned- I think he's got the talent and he's going to have a lot of opportunity this season. So yeah. and- give, me, give me some uh, Alan Lazard. It's not like he's entirely unproven. Like, it's not like, oh, like all of a sudden, this is this random guy who's been thrusted into a wide receiver one role. No, like he had eight mm-hmm. touchdowns last year. Yeah, like for the role that he was playing, his that's touchdown really good. numbers, you know, progressively get bigger every season. So, I mean, you you mentioned his size, 6'5", 227. That makes him a perfect legitimate red zone target. Now, the thing is, he will be the one probably getting all the attention from the number one quarterback. And we don't know yet. I think the only thing we don't know is we don't know if he's going to be able to be up to that task. Like last year, you know, when the Packers played the Rams, he wasn't lining up against Jalen Ramsey. Obviously that was Devonta Adams yeah. and Devonta Adams was getting all the attention, whether it be from Jalen Johnson on the bears or any CB one that was guarding up uh, against the Packers. It was CB one versus Devonta Adams. Now Alan Lazard has to step up to the plate, has to step up and be ready to face guys like Jalen Ramsey, face guys like Jalen Johnson, face guys, you know, all across the league who are CB ones if he's ready to do that you know we'll see and you know they they have uh, an offensive system that's built to get some guys open um and, and christian watson's a younger player development player but you know aaron Rodgers likes to spread the ball around but he will be targeting alan lazard like as bears fans we know like alan lazard was targeted when, when we played them and you know i, I hate any time there's a reception by a package player and there were a lot of them from alan lazard from what i can remember last year it was like 13 yard plays 14 yard plays i hear al michael saying oh you know 14 yard catch by alan lazard and it's just like a dagger to the heart um but yeah I, I like that pick a lot and again i think the adp you brought up is really important 100 you say 130 is that what you said it was yeah, 130 131 131 so like that's this just, isn't even yeah. a guy like that's just a no-brainer that's just a no-brainer at that price i don't know it's a bench player, even in a 12 team league. That's a bench player. Man, that's 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 a no brainer. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, you would be crazy if he's available for you and you have your roster filled. I mean, that is a great guy to just be coming off yeah. the bench or even a flex doesn't, pick. Doesn't pan out, whatever, drop him. Yeah. So, and, you know, if you're in a PPR league too, he should be getting majority of the recession. So he'll get a boost there from PPR. Um, but let's go to my number four. We got two left for the, each of us. I'm going to go Michael Bra- Gallup. Uh, 
wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. This one is a no brainer for me. Okay. He's coming off of an injury. I get that, but there is a question that, or, or there's, there's speculation rather that he could, he could be back for week one. He had that ACL injury last year and people didn't think he was going to be back for week one. He's gone through rehab and people think he could be a week one player, but even if he's not, even if he's not a, you know, ready for week one, if you can, if people get scared, and are going to fall off him big time because of that injury, he can be an absolute steal because he's going to put up crazy numbers this year. He's in one of the most pass heavy offenses this year, and he's wide receiver two for the Dallas Cowboys offense after the departure of Amari Cooper to the Cleveland Browns. It feels like he's been waiting for years to, to have this role to slot in at wide receiver two. And this offense with Dallas Prescott, he's going to take off. We know that Prescott likes to throw the ball right. He likes to throw it deep. He's going to throw some INTs, but it doesn't matter. He's going to throw the ball all the way around. And Michael Gabb has been proven to do it. His ADP right now, Mark, is 118. Again, if you're in an eight team or even 10 team league, this guy might be coming off the bench for you or might be a flex for you. And I think he could end this year as a legitimate high end wide receiver two, maybe, maybe low end wide receiver one. I mean, like there's going to be people who are like, well, there's too many mouths to feed. There, that's not true. I mean, CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper last year and the year prior were, you know, they were, were they boom players? Either of them? No, but were they good enough? Yes. They were like, it's not a question of we have too many guys in the room. Like even Cedric Wilson, who's now in the Miami Dolphins last year was getting, getting numbers from Dak Prescott last year. And of course, I had to do with a little bit of injuries, including Michael Gallup. But I just think there's going to be a lot of people, Mark, in leagues who are going to be, you know, they're going to see the Q, right? They're going to see the Q next to his name when they go on the fan ESPN fantasy draft board. They're going to know what that means. It means questionable because they don't know whether he's going to be ready. And no one wants to start a player who might not be, you know, ready for week one. He's going to draft a player who's going to be able to start. But I think there's going to be people who sleep on him. And even if he does not get back fully, let's say he plays week one, but he's not fully ready until week three. This is a guy who's going to be a league winner. If Michael Gallup is your flex, you are winning your league, or you're at least making the damn playoffs, and you're not doing whatever crazy things you have to do if you get last in your league, because we know a lot of you guys do some crazy things, whether it's Waffle House Challenge, uh, whether it's you know a million different things that are just hilarious that I see on Instagram. But I feel like you don't really buy into Michael Gallup. Because you had CeeDee Lamb last year. Cowboys receivers maybe kind of failed you last year. But do you yeah. agree with Michael Gallup here? I feel like I might be out on a limb. Uh, yeah, you are on a limb a little bit. He's not a league winner, that's for sure. But, you know, again, at that price, you can't really go wrong. I agree, you know, with Amari Cooper gone, he steps into that number two role. But you also have Dalton Schultz, I think might. Dalton Schultz might take a bigger step forward than he does. Mm-hmm. And I still have I still have some questions about Dak Prescott. You know, is he what we think he is? Really? Yeah, I was big. I was big on Dak last year. But I have some reservations this year. So I think as a fan, as far as feeding his wide receivers, there's nothing to worry about. Like you can argue whether he's a legitimate top 10 fantasy quarterback or even top five, because that's what he should be. But he's going to throw the ball around like he's going to like he might throw INTs. But if you're a, a Cowboys well, wide receiver owner, he's going to he's going to feed those guys. You did. You did see the Cowboys shift to a more run heavy offense towards the latter part of last season. I guess we'll have to do an Ezekiel Elliott breakdown for fantasy yeah. coming up soon yeah, because we'll I have no idea what his value is anymore. But let's go to your number four. We got uh, two more for you. Who do you got for us with your number four sleeper of 2022 at the wide receiver? I got this one. This one, we'll see what the viewers think. I got Jalen Waddle. Um, it's a no-brainer. Know, he's, you yeah, know, well, here the price, the price is a little bit heavier here. He's going to have 42 uh, average draft yeah. position uh, he's going to be the wide receiver two on that team and you know anything you read about the miami dolphins this year is all it's just all talking about tyree kill and how possibly mm-hmm. Jalen waddle is actually going to take a step back because you got tyree kill on this team i don't know i thought you know tyree kill just opens offenses up you know he just takes the, he, he just takes the top off of defense he was living he was you know i think he was in the top like bottom 10th percentile of uh, average depth of target last season at like, you know, averaging like seven yards per target. Um, so, you know, he, Tua likes to go to him quickly and and in that shorter range. And with Tyree Kill being the main focus, I think he's going to get, I think Jalen Watts going to get open a lot more. He might, he might get some more looks. Yeah. I mean, I think when you talk about like, there's going to be people who I think see this and see your pick of Jalen Waddle and be like, that's not a sleeper. What I think you're trying to say 
is that at 42 ADP, this guy could be a top five fantasy wide receiver if he if he really you know blows up. Do you is that what you're trying to say? I don't know about top five. Top ten, maybe. Top ten. Yeah, that's more like it. He did finish 14th last season. As a rookie. No. Tua two is not Mahomes. As true. No matter what Tyreek Hill says. (laughs) No matter how badly Tyreek Hill wants him to be Mahomes, he's not. He doesn't have his cannon. He doesn't have his, you know, his magic. So I think, you know, people are going to be slightly underwhelmed with Tyreek this year just because Patrick Mahomes isn't able to get to him, get get the ball to him in crazy places. And I think, you know, Jalen Waddell is going to serve more of that safety outlet. I think you could be right. I mean, this is a player who has the potential to be, like we said, top 10. I like that pick. Um, That 14th place fantasy finish. When you read that, I was like, what? Dude, 14th? I had no idea. I think he kind of turned it on later last year. Um, mm-hmm. He started to kind of blow up a little bit. He was scoring a lot of touchdowns yeah, too. Yeah, and you see, you see receivers develop like that. You know, they can have oh, yeah. a, first year guys over here and then break out. So we'll see. We'll see if he has that sophomore year breakout. <clears throat> there you go. Um, let's go. Our final guys for each of us. My final guy. My final sleeper is Jerry Judy. I will say, I will admit, I drafted Jerry Judy last year and it messed me up. I reached for Jerry Judy. I thought he was going to be my wide receiver too. Maybe not my wide receiver too. I think my flex. And everyone, you know, in the room thought I was right for doing it. I mean, you had the reasons to believe he was going to be a reliable receiver. People didn't know what Drew Locke was going to provide with the Broncos last year. But there's one reason, one reason only this guy's a number one sleeper, a number five sleeper for me. And that's obviously Russell Wilson. Like, and there, nothing else needs to be said, all right? Like, Jerry Judy scored zero touchdowns last year, but that offense was in shambles. I mean, they had no idea what they were doing. Vic Fangio as a head coach didn't know what was going on on the offensive side of the ball. Drew Locke was the quarterback. You know, guys were, you know, switching out of the quarterback position. Now, the interesting thing is they have an offensive head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, who will call plays. So their head coach will be calling plays. As Bears fans, we might not, you know, encourage that idea because of our last head coach who called plays. Matt Nagy didn't work out very well for us, but doesn't mean it's incorrect recipe. Uh, you know, Andy Reid did it for a while. I think Eric Bannamy does it now. But Nathaniel Hackett will be calling plays. And look, Jerry Judy had a solid fantasy season his rookie year. He has to build off of that. He has to kind of wipe away what happened last year and build off of that. And he is going to be with a quarterback who is going to throw him the ball. He's going to throw the ball all around and he's going to throw the ball deep and he's going to be a deep threat target. We saw some plays his rookie season where he was catching deep balls. He was making deep plays um, and he was scoring 80 plus yard touchdowns that were you know, one of the reasons that I picked him up his rookie year. And Mark, let's just go straight to your number five, too, because you also have a guy in the Broncos, right? Yeah, all right. Off the same page you're doing. Give me Cortland Sutton. You know, we saw what happened when Matthew Stafford went over the Rams. It just every receiver on that team just, you know, all of a sudden, like either yeah. Cooper Cup number one, uh, Van Jefferson. What OBJ. Was yeah. OBJ. All these guys like starters, like all of a sudden so i think you know they got russ they're gonna they're gonna create a system for russ to thrive and you got these two Cortland sutton and uh jerry judy two good receivers uh i think they're both you know russ has shown that he can support two fantasy relevant wide receivers before yeah lockett and dk metcalf mm-hmm. i think you see the same thing happened with jerry judy and Cortland sutton to some extent uh Cortland sutton Third largest average depth of target, uh, 2021. So deep threat. Also sixth in goal line targets his first two seasons. So so you have you know deep target and goal line usage. And he just signed a four year, 60 million extension. So follow the money. You know, the Broncos are gonna get the ball. They're gonna get the ball to the guy they paid. You know, mm-hmm. they want it. They want to prove that they, they did it for a reason. So I like both those picks, Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. You can like both of them, but I'm afraid you're going to have to pick one. Look, the, both of these guys, when you look at their rankings on whatever website you guys use, ESPN or NFL.com, whatever, these guys are like neck and neck with each other. And you're not going to be in position unless you have back-to-back picks to pick no, both. And you never want to pick both. Who is the guy that you're picking? If, you are, if you're on the draft, you're on the clock, Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton are both there. Which one are you taking? That's tough. Uh, give me Cortland Sutton. I, I, I agree. Him, my guy, I'm gonna stick with him. Uh, Jerry Judy, you know, still semi unproven. And Cortland Sutton with Drew Locke had some really nice games last season. So let's go with what we know. Give me Cortland Sutton. But what I was gonna say, you know, what's really funny is 
same thing happened with uh, in the Los Angeles with the Rams. Cooper Cup and, and Robert Woods were neck and neck in all drafts. Best one of them emerged. Ever. One of them, one of them just, you know, Matthew Stafford just liked throwing him the ball more. So we'll see what happens. That's gonna be a fun, that's gonna be a fun team to watch this year. It's gonna be a fun team to watch. I think what you said about his average up at target um kind of stood out to me because I was, you know, with Drew Locke there. And now you get a guy who throws absolute moon balls. I mean, I don't know how he does it, Russell Wilson. He just chucks it up at million feet in the air and just lands right into the lap of his receivers so uh, and i don't think there's you know there's a lot of people who think russell wilson's gonna lose a step i don't i don't think so i think he's gonna go on to denver and you know do what he needs to do he's a good player he's a guy who's gonna get down to business so uh there you have let's run down it one let's run it down one more time we'll go my five first i have number one darnell mooney number two Kadarius tony number three amon russ st brown number four michael gallup and number five jerry judy Mark has number one, Gabriel Davis, number two, Juju Smith-Schuster, number three, Alan Lazard, number four, Jalen Waddle, and number five, Cortland Sutton. Let us know what you guys think of these top five sleepers in the comments, in the chat, and drop some other names that you think we should discuss on future episodes. This is going to be a little fantasy football series that we have going all the way up until the NFL season in September. Mark, it was a pleasure having you on, my boy. Thanks for dropping the knowledge, dropping the insight. You gave me too much information, though. I'm taking the trophy home this year. I'm winning the league. I'm taking the money. And you are not winning. I'm taking it over this year. Not happening. Say? It's not happening. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. And he will be competing, I said, uh, in our Bears Nation podcast, Fantasy Football League, that we, will, that we will reveal more information about in a couple months. We're going to do that for cash prize. So if you guys watching this are interested in that, definitely, definitely, definitely reply in the comments or hit us a DM uh, on the socials. But yeah, for myself, Kevin, for Mark, that's been the first episode of Bears Nation podcast, Fantasy Football. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.